Anyone can sound like Beethoven. But your music, what you do, only you can do that. The physicality that you both got into for the role, I'm going to start with you, Vigo. And first of all, mastering that New York accent, because if I do a New, a New York accent, it's terrible. <laughs> mastering the accent, first of all, and the weight gain, because I know you've lost weight for roles before. Is this more fun, or is it just a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. I mean, it's actually, well, it's certainly a lot easier and more fun to gain the weight than to have to lose it yeah. afterwards. Um, that was just one element, and yeah. it was true to the character and you know and like going to the gym a little and all that stuff it, I had to look a certain way as much as I could I don't look exactly like him did you more than he looks exactly like Doug Shirley right. yeah did you but just eat Italian food was it were you in character when you were eating I, ate, I at first I ate just that I ate tons of it tons of it and a lot and a few times with the Val Longa family they introduced me to what they what about ate. coming to the reading with the table reads me you and Pete and I don't know Vigo yet. This is like my second time Everybody seeing him. Pizza? You walked in, you had like three or four pizzas. It was just <laughs> so me, you, and Pete. I'm trying to lose weight for my part. He walks in with like four pizzas. And he's like, yeah, I just got a couple of pizzas, you know? And, and it's me, him, and Pete sitting around, and there's he just might have like. Had one or two. Yeah, I think I, I, yeah I, don't, I think I might have had a bite or a slice. Yeah. I ate the rest. And the, so, and the, and the yeah. accent, the, uh, Peter, Peter was talking to me about the, like, any good? Any good? Yeah, that no line. good. No, no good? good? What, no, no good? good? But does it, does it stay no, with I you? No, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, I, I was, to be honest with you, I was, I was, like, you're always nervous about some aspect. Yeah. And in this case, I didn't want to uh, do a caricature yeah. of New York, yeah. of Italian-Americans, of the Val along the family. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be respectful and get it as right as I could within my physical and mental capabilities. And... And it was Nick Vallongo who really helped me start to feel comfortable yeah. by introducing me to his wow. family, to the food, <laughs> and uh, and just their way of being. Yeah. And, and he was generous, very generous with yeah. his father's things also, you know. I mean, at the necklace I wear yeah. with the Mother Mary medal on it, that was his, that was Tony's. And um, photographs, fortunately, audio recordings yeah. where, where Tony Lip was talking about the real Doc Shirley yeah. and, you know, all of that stuff. You've talked about your dad and how he was a traveling performer yeah. and how he really taught a sense in you of quality versus quantity. Hmm. And I was wondering because I feel like that was a lot of Don Shirley. Hmm. And I was wondering if you used that at all in the role. I'm always very aware of my dad's presence in my life. Quality over quantity, I think that that's something that I hold dear to me. Yeah, most certainly. This gentleman says that I'm not permitted to dine here. I'm afraid not. How does he smile and shake their hands like that? Because it takes courage to change people's hearts. First of all, you have a theme of road trips in mm. several of your films. Yeah. Talk to me about that, how it influenced the film, and why. Um, you know, it's it's funny, like, I never consciously go think, oh, I'm going to make a road trip movie, but I realize now, having made a bunch, that, like, wow, I make a lot of road trip movies. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I love being on the road. I've driven cross country 22 times, 16 alone. And I do my best thinking on uh, in a car for some reason and in driving and you know, there's something like if you're in a car you 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 can't be, you know, you have to drive. You have to look at the thing and yet you can't you couldn't be if I'm at home, I can't sit on the couch and do what I do in a car because yeah. I could be thinking, well, I should be doing the dishes or I could be doing those emails or doing this. But when you're driving, you can only drive. And so your, my brain just clears up and all the little garbagey things in it, they go away and I have clarity. So yes, when I get in any kind of situation where I'm a little confused what to do next, my wife will say, take a drive. So I, I'll go get a rental car and like I live you know, outside LA and we'll just, I'll just jump in a car and I'll drive to you know, Vancouver and then uh, fly back. You know, just to get <laughs> oh some time, you know, in my head. And That's I amazing. I highly recommend it for anybody. It's a great gift to be able to be alone in your head and just thinking for several days. What do we do about the bones? We do this. <laughs> Pick it up, Tony. Squirrels would eat it anyway. Pick it up. Well, speaking of gifts, I think Vigo said one of your gifts as a director is that he can say a line, and there's such a great balance between the drama and the humor in this film. He can say a line and you can say one little thing like, take a pause before you say this word, or enunciate this word more. 
How do you, and, and it makes it funnier, how do you know this, aside from your incredible track record as a comedic director, but how do you know this and can you give me an example of how that works? Well, I mean, it's just like a gut feeling that I'm feeling, but the, what I love about, about working with Vigo, and not all actors have this, most though, uh, but uh, he, he'll take a line reading. You know, he's as good as it gets, yet he'll take yes. a line reading. Some actors, they don't want a line reading because they feel like you're stealing from them that, well, you didn't let me do it. Like, I'm not a robot, you know. But right. occasionally, and I don't do a lot of line readings, but if it's a, like, he's just missing it, I will do it. And, I, and one example is just, you know, when Dr. Shirley is eating the chicken for the first time. Favorite scene. Um, <laughs> he looks in the mirror, he goes, what, no good. And that's just a Rhode Island thing that guys say, Italian guys, like if you're enjoying something, they'll always say, what, no good. Like you have a good meal, you're eating it, it's like amazing, what, no good. It's just this <laughs> bizarre little thing. But he kept, he kept saying, you know, uh, what, no good? And I said, no, no, it's, what, no good. You know, and I over and over, but it's, it's a minor thing. It doesn't get a laugh, but it gets a laugh to me and my Rhode Island friends who know that expression. Uh, favorite scene. Thank you for that scene. It was incredible. Real scene, by the way. Like much of the movie, you know, that really we got happened. this off. It actually happened exactly that way. Uh, we had all these audio tapes from Dr. Uh, from uh, Tony Lip telling you, yeah, the guy wouldn't eat chicken. And, you know, finally I bought a bucket. I go, yeah, I'm a chicken. And he tells the whole story. It was amazing. We were giggling listening to it.